Hello and welcome on The Watchers TV. And today we have one of these really nice walkthrough videos to share with you. And after our first German watchmaking encounter video published a short while ago, well, we kind of really like the food there and immediately return to the Glashütte region. And we will now explore in much more details the manufacture of A Lange in Söhne. That sounds pretty sweet, right? So without much doubt, this is one of the most uh, legitimate brand in terms of a mechanical quality watchmaking you can find. A brand that shook up the Swiss uh, industry at a time when it was simply resting on its laurels. A brand that redefined the art of finishing and pushing the limits of precision and technical developments a bit further. So yes, I rather like Lange. And we had the great opportunity to walk uh, through this uh, pretty impressive manufacturer with no other than Mr. Anthony De Haas, Director of Product Development. And we'll use uh, different aspects of the spectacular Turbograph Perpetual Polymerite timepiece as uh, kind of the backbone of this visit. But at the end of the video, we'll come back uh, with Mr. De Haas on some of the most iconic watches presented by A Lange in Zerne. So let's go. And yes, there is a lot to be said and shown. Enjoy. Hello. Hello, Tony. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. Welcome Thank you. to Lange & Zene. It's a pleasure to be here. Maybe we're going to take a look at uh, how, how a complicated watch like the Tubograph Perpetual is assembled, the little steps, the different steps, like okay. the finishing. And of course, we're not going to show you all the secrets. That's right. a yeah. couple of them we want to keep for ourselves. All right. So. Sounds good to me. Perfect. All right. Let's go then. Let's go. So in a certain way, how would you define uh, Alang and Zöne as a brand? Passion. And not high watchmaking. German high-end watchmaking. It's Germany here. Yeah. It sounds strange from a Dutch guy, but I can't help it. I'm working here. It was German fine watchmaking. Uh, the the three-quarter plate is a, a glashütte thing. Germany. Um, the design is very understated. It uh, has some sharp angles. German design it compares the German designed car and an Italian designed car. You see the difference. An important thing is what, what I call performance is like uh, the things like we develop, like the stopping tourbillon, uh, the zero reset, very useful functions, uh, but not loud. And it's more for the people in the know. A little bit, you have to be a little bit connoisseur to understand what we do and how we do things. There are people who call it the triple split, the data road, they call it the little micro city. Like you have in these first Star Wars movies, you go and you're playing, you go through these, and you go through the movement. That's what it's all about. So here we have the engraving department. Hello, good morning. An interesting thing is every Lange and Zöne movement, every, there's no one without, yeah. has an engraved part. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the balance cock. Mm -hmm. Sometimes two or one or two extra bridges, like the time zone. The tubium bridge on the movement side is also hand engraved. And they have a, a fixed pattern, a flowerish pattern, out of tradition. Mm -hmm. Six individuals, you let them make flowerish theme which is from a base the same but everybody is like handwriting has a little bit different interpretation of the flowerization which is fine which is great because it's human you could see that that each watch it makes each watch as a unique piece fun thing is if we come here with visitors owners of a longer watch say can i have your watch man? We show them, they are able to say who made that watch. And that's a fascinating moment. And you engrave uh, every type of uh, material here? I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, because, even uh, platinum? Yeah, we do platinum we, because we do, uh, uh, on special demand, we do uh, half hunter cases. Uh -huh. All our watches are delivered standard with a sapphire case back. But there are people who say, no, I want to have a solid case back with a personalized engraving. We do that, of course. Special order. And we have our Handwerkskunst, that's that unpronounceable name, except for Germans. Handwerkskunst, hand craftsmanship watches, we do uh, some. So once in a while, we have a special theme. 
uh, we had some anim enamel uh, watches last year and when we met in Florence we yeah. just presented uh, the engraved and then covered with uh, Translu transluent uh, enamel with a half hundred case, or even that with enamel. An average for that watch, we have to make five dials to get to one a good one. Nobody sees that, nobody knows, and that's but people don't understand why only 20. Maybe now you understand why only 20. It's not commercial because even our own sales guys are always killing me because why only 20? I could have sold a hundred of these, you know, but that's. Sorry, it doesn't make. Otherwise, I'm frustrating, and we are frustrating our own salespeople and other people because we can't make more than it takes to wait time. A lot of evolution. First of all, we were three people in the beginning, and today we're about 770. In the beginning, we were predominantly servicing the German or the German speaking markets today we're a true global company with about 63 different countries. Um, you know what you see here didn't exist in 1990. We're, we're working out of old facilities and that's probably the most can contemporary facility you can get if you are into producing fine man watches. Um, we, we're truly international, we are very sophisticated in what we do. What we still do exactly the same way is you know, the craftsmanship, our general idea of how watches should look like, that very German approach to, um, you know, legibility and uh, importance um, of what you have to see first and what you have to see second. But it's also the two soles of our watches, you know, the very legible, understated dial. And then if you turn it around, it's the complete opposite. It's opulent, it's decoration, it's design. It's, you know, it's all you want to indulge yourself with. And with the watchmaking school that we now operate, I think for the 16th year, uh, we'll ensure that you know, even in future, there will never be a shortage on, on, on very skilled craftsmen. So Tony, explain us where we are now. This is the Finnish department. Not, not because they're Finnish people, eh? yeah. um, <laughs> but it's the finishing department, actually. It's also a practical joke I'm using, but uh, yeah, here every part of the movement is decorated by hand. You hear a little machine on the background, but that's a hand machine uh -huh. to polish. And um, let's take a look at the tourbillon bridge from the Tubograph Perpetual calendar, because that is a big challenge for us to make. On top, there's a Perpetual calendar model, N not a complete module, partly integrated, but you go higher. And it was impossible to lift up the cage, the tourbillon cage, that's what we wanted to do first. Mm -hmm. But there you have a collision with the hour wheel. We couldn't find another solution by doing so. The cage is deeper uh -huh. so we had to find a way and a nice design to find that bridge and the solution and so very concretely i mean how long does it take to uh, accomplish such a such a piece yeah that's difficult uh, to say uh, because the lady over here some she, she will maybe use for one bridge one day and it could be uh, seven hours or it could be 10 hours that depends a little bit on N not on the wind from the east or the west, that's, but it is human uh -huh. and not everybody has every day a good day. Yeah. So it's very difficult to, to see and I'm only talking that day is only finishing. Yeah. So you will get the part fabricated uh -huh. and then she will do the finishing and the last, the upper black polish finishing is made by the watchmaker actually. Not the 45 degree angles ah, okay. and not the black polish in the curve. But the final piece What's the reason is behind that? because the watchmaker has to do the assembly. Yeah. So he's manipulating, as we call that. He's pulling it and adjusting his thing, adjustment, back and top. And then there's a risk, especially with black polish. You mm -hmm. see everything. But this is a zinc, a zinc plate with a tripod. But this is, you see, the, the tool we made for this bridge. Mm -hmm. So she so will turn it around and make, start with big circles and go tiny circles at the end here on the zinc with a polished paste yeah, and then she hopes it will go black but it's not like 
You do that five minutes and then you're done. Because with this, I mean, you would only have like the, the upper part of the yeah, bridge. Yeah, this is only the upper part. The rest is by hand. Yeah. We, we found, we tried to find tools where you can do. No. If you polish too much, the surface gets wider because you take away of the beveling. <laughs> it looks good. Throw it away. So, and th the fascinating part is the upper, the flat, is also black polished. But you see the anglage, the angles, and here you see sharp inner angles. And there are quite a couple of them. <laughs> uh, an interesting thing is that every watch is almost a piece, a unique piece. Because it's, if you would have had two of these bridges, no one is exactly the same. Although we work according to plan. Yeah. But that's the fine tuning of hand. And that's the devotion people, we all have here. You know, you have, because the machines, they have a milling tool. And you see, the milling tool is round. Yeah. And there's a minimum, a very tiny, you could choose a very tiny diameter. But it's not a sharp angle. Yeah. And the sharp angle is by, by hand. Of course, we prepare everything. And then the last stroke is done by hand. And then, <laughs> then you have the sharp angle, but it's not polished yet. So you need to polish the inner angles. And then you have to be very careful. Otherwise, it looks very wobbly or not, not well defined, very fine. This is the department where the complicated watches are assembled. So it's not complicated people over here, <laughs> but the work, what they do is very complicated. So here are the master's pieces made of the datagraph perpetual tourbillon, the tourbillon perpetual tourbillon, we have the Terra Luna, we have constant force watches. So here are the top watchmakers. To have the ability to think yourself into the mechanism, like understand the following ways, you know, because of a perpetual calendar, is a complex combinations of levers and wheels and switches and ratchets. And you have to understand what does it make it work how you can adjust it. It's not like you take a piece and you, and you fix the screw and then the next part, and you have to adjust. What do we mean by adjust? Giving a tension, a bit more tension to certain springs for certain levers, or even slightly cut something away from the lever because the pressure on the start-stop pusher is not exactly what we want for the quality. It must be very smooth, but very defined. These things, you have to have a feeling. And there's a German word for it, Fingerspitzengefühl. Well, the, 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 the sentence in the, the tips of your fingers, you, 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 need to, you have to like it. And would generally uh, a watchmaker uh, work here from scratch till the finished assembled product? Or how do you organize your work? The watchmaker gets parts which are finished most of the time. Most of the parts are already finished to a certain level, like polishing or uh, function. You know, you have a lever, and the, there's an area where it's in interaction with another lever. You have uh, the functions which need to be polished. That's the watchmaker can do, but not the whole beveling thing. And there we switch. We do not like to just stick with one movement. Mm -hmm. That's not good. We have some specialist themes, and nobody, not everybody is capable of doing a minute repeat. Not even the guys who are here. Uh -huh. It's a different level. The lady who's doing the, the assembly of the tourbillon cages, for example, she loves doing that. For, us, for, for her, it's a sport to get high precision and all. That's her thing. And she says, oh, you want to do chrono? Mm, nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everybody has his favorite, his thing. Hello, sir. Hi. Hi. Oh, this is an interesting piece. You see what he is doing now? He's having in his tweezers. That is the rattrapante axe and the wheel which comes on top. It's a quite it's very thin, long very axe. Long. Yes, because that is the axe which goes to the, through the entire movement. It's the upper hand, the rattrapante hand, which goes up on the dial side and up on the movement side. So it's very long. And it's already a technical highlight to fabricate an axe, which is so thin and so long. And that is very tricky. Once 
if it's slightly out of just slightly out of range, the thing starts to wear and tear and it blocks and you don't understand why the hand is not rattrapant and why it's not or during the normal running it starts to flatter. These are the things how to lubricate very tiny or not. That is that is interesting that is uh, now he's doing the adjustment. He's putting in the wheel, putting on top the bridge, and then he's checking the end shake of the wheel. If it's too high, most of the times we adjust the minimum. The French guys used to say libre sans jeu, free without shake, mm -hmm. uh, which is nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. And that's also a thing. You ask about skills, watchmaker with experience, he's getting an eye for that. He doesn't need to measure. Yeah. We have tools to measure, but that would take quite too long time. So the people know. He's really feeling, is it smooth, but well defined, which for us is very important. Not like clawing, clawing, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, ooh, you're no, almost scared really to use your chrono. Yeah, yeah. Very impressive indeed. It's just yeah. that the, it's the pleasure you can feel. And that's exactly, yeah. that's like, what they do. Because that is a lever with a pin, which flips over, clack, clack, and he is adjusting by hand that clack. So now it's this time where we're going to talk about some of the timepieces uh, of Lange and Söhne, and obviously it's most, kind of the most iconic timepieces, and of course we're going to start with the start. The start with the Lange 1, mm -hmm. and it is one of the first four watches which were presented in 1994. It's uh, it was a decentered design with the outsized date. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was very new, decentered dial, and perfectly aligned. So you have the outsized date, the power reserve indication, three days, and the second hand, and perfect alignment within the circle. Uh, yeah, this is this is where it all started with um, the original one, because uh, the original one we built until 2014. And then, after 20 years, learning a lot about developing movements and so, we said we gave her technically an update. Mm -hmm. We hardly touched the design, mm -hmm. that iconic design, but we gave it a completely new movement with an instantaneously jumping outsized date now, mm -hmm. around midnight, clack. And a slightly bigger balance wheel, so it's now up to the standards of today. And this is started with it, but now we have a whole entire Lange 1 collection with a Grand Lange 1, Grand Lange 1 moon face, a Lange 1 with a moon face, with a hidden day-night indication in the moon face, and many other Lange ones. But this is Lange 1, the base where it all began. Yeah, and for me, I mean, for me, this is really one of the most, I mean, iconic yes, uh, timepieces yeah. uh, yeah. ever. I mean, it's intemporal. I mean, it will always look nice, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we have more. Fantastic, let's continue. Here we have the 1815. This is the annual calendar version. 1815, uh, why 1815? That was the year of birth of Ferdinand Adolf Lange, the company founder. And you can recognize a little bit, uh, very classical, printed Arabic numerals. This is in fact our very classics of the classics product family uh, with a Chemin Fer, mm -hmm. railway track, and very classical manual wound movements, of course, with the three quarter plate. Beautiful big balance rules. And this is the this is the annual calendar. So the calendar is quite intelligent, but doesn't have the intelligence of a perpetual calendar. <laughs> Why did I say this? This watch is the famous datograph, but not the basic version, the datograph. It has, of course, the chronograph with the instantaneously jumping minute counter and the outsized date. But this beauty has a perpetual calendar, an instantaneously switching perpetual calendar. The difference between the perpetual calendar and an annual calendar is the perpetual calendar knows if a month has 30, 31 or 28 or 29 days. Mm -hmm. It knows. Not enough of this. On the back, perfectly hidden, only for the owner, is integrated in the beautiful and famous datograph chronograph movement, a beautiful big tourbillon, which also has the patented tourbillon stop system to really, you're really able to check if your tourbillon is as accurate as everybody tells you. So as soon as there is a second hand in the watch, 
we will put in that system for stopping the tubing. In 2009, we presented a piece, a watch, which we thought, hmm, it's a niche product. It's a mechanical timepiece, of course, at Langenzone, but was digital reading of the time. So you have two displays for the hours and the minutes. We thought it's more a niche product. And we were so overwhelmed by the enormous success of that watch. It's not a cheap watch because it requires a, a big complication to make it able to, uh, to move the discs every minute instantaneously. So which means the regular second hand jumps over the, sur over the 60, comes over the 60 and the next minute jumps further. The Zeitwerk. So we had to use a big, big barrel a serious barrel to move the discs, but the big barrel producing way too much power for the escapement, which is quite fine and delicate. So we said we make another spring in between, a remontoir system. Not on the escapement, like many do, but on the fourth wheel. And on the fourth wheel we have an extra spring, which gives enough power for the balance wheel to make the watch tick-tacking during a minute. After a minute, it needs to be recharged, that little spring. Exactly after one minute, we release the big power from the big barrel to recharge that little, little spring so the watch can continue to run another minute. At the same time, we release that big barrel for recharging that spring, it moves the disc another minute. Richard Lange, the eldest son of Ferdinand Adolf Lange, he was a long-term technical director of the company. He has a lot of patents on his name. And we honored him by a product line or a product family called Richard Lange, which we see more technical classic pieces. Mm -hmm. This is a Fusion chain, you know, with the little chain and the Fusi for constant force, a very classical system, which was used in deck watches and in big clocks. And one of the first four watches was the Tourbillon Poulemerit in 1994. It was the first in the wristwatch with that tiny little chain. You know that chain has 0.5 millimeter thickness, 630 thick parts. Yeah. It's a crazy it's part. Crazy. It's a crazy part. But yeah, well, what is a Fuji? I compare it with a little big uh, marriage cake. You know the big cakes <laughs> with the different steps. So they have, the cake has different circumferences. So at the beginning, the barrel is connected by the chain to the smallest circumference. And the chain is winding, winding and getting turned around by winding around the bigger circumferences. The action, the idea is the action of lever. In the beginning you have a lot of torque from the barrel. It gives, by the smallest circumference, as time goes by, it pulls the chain back and it becomes bigger and bigger to the circumference. So you have the drop of spring is compensated by the size of the marriage cake, actually. <laughs> we wanted to make, and this is a regulator dial, you see 12 o'clock position, the minute hand, the hours, and then the left side, the second hand, mounted on top of the tubion cage. There is a part missing in the hour dial, but we wanted to show as much as possible from the tubion. And it only appears if you need it. From 6 o'clock until noon you have the dial and the rest of the time. So it works automatically. The tubograph perpetual and again the tubion, the Fuji chain. It's hard to see, it's hidden under the three-quarter plate, which is hidden underneath the chronograph rattrapant <laughs> parts. Yeah, it's a lot to tell about this watch. It is a very complicated watch. So, but the basic idea is not far from the watch we spoke before. It's the Fusion chain system, which is powering the tubion, the minute tubion. So you have the tubion. Then we have the chronograph rattrapant. So if you start, the chrono will start 
you push this button on the left. Ah, there's another hand underneath. So this is the intermediate time, the split time. You push once again. They do rattrape. They recatch the original time. And of course you do the stop. And the zero reset. On top of that, we have a perpetual calendar. With the weekdays, the months and the leap year, beautiful moon phase with the date. And these adjustments of all these systems together, that requires a good watchmaker and a lot of technical insight. There are not many watchmakers who are able to do this. And that's also the reason why there are not so many made. So I really hope you enjoyed this rather long video. It seems that most of you are fine with these uh, long formats. So we definitely took our time uh, and uh, now it's time to say goodbye. Thanks for watching and sharing. All the best to you and viva watchmaking.